Welcome, we are from Allen High School, Advanced Placement IB Chemistry, talking about thermochemistry and thermodynamics. This is my passion, loving my students through their journey of learning chemistry. And it is not even 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning, and here I am making videos for y'all so I can get them out to you. All right. Um, we were talking about the terminology and the concepts. We're preparing to move into the mathematics. You want to make sure you understand your concepts first. And heads up, this is a critical component of our discussion. If you don't understand what I'm talking about on this whole little slide here, you need to have me reteach it in class. Remember, embrace your learning. You're the ones who know whether you understand something or not. Make sure you ask me. Now, this is a chart that's going to compare enthalpy, delta H, entropy, delta S, and now we're going to introduce delta G. Delta G is called the free energy the energy that is available to do work. And that's the value that gives us an indicator within this system of whether or not a system is spontaneous and at what temperatures the system would be spontaneous. So let's first identify a few things on this. Here we have a negative enthalpy. What I did here with these signs negative, positive, positive, negative, is made all of the possible combinations between delta H and delta S. So let's label them. Remember, negative for enthalpy is favorable. Sorry about that little mess up. Favorable. And we want to go through and list each and every one of these. Uh, for entropy, positive is favorable. So I'm going to be starting with our favorable, favorable combination. And what that's going to do is help us see what our sign for delta G is, because hopefully it's intuitive. If not, then I want you to think about it clearly. Uh, hopefully it would be intuitive that if I have favorable enthalpy and favorable entropy, I am very likely talking about a spontaneous situation. And indeed I am. So favorable, favorable is spontaneous. Let's do the opposite of that. This is unfavorable. And this is fa uh, unfavorable, right? Positive and negative. Loss of freedom is not a good thing. And I think it should be becoming evident for you that this would be our non-spontaneous situation. So let's take a look. This formula is vital to wrap your minds around. So you, you need to, um, what you're going to see is you can use this quite a bit in justification if you understand it. So if delta H is positive and I have, or excuse me, I did that backwards, my bad. If delta H, I'm on this first example here, if delta H is negative, and then I subtract a positive, a minus minus a positive, will be always spontaneous, always negative. So in this case, delta G is always negative. A negative free energy is a spontaneous situation. Now, let's take a look at this. If delta G is a positive minus a negative, right? T is always positive. Temperatures in Kelvin, it's always positive. So a positive minus a negative is going to give us that always positive situation here. So now we have the sign of our free energy that's giving us our spontaneity. If delta G is negative, it's spontaneous. If delta G is positive, it's non-spontaneous. Now, what do we do if we are um, at a, a more in-between kind of a situation here? So let's see what we would have. In this example, 
I have a negative enthalpy. That is a favorable situation. And a negative entropy. That is unfavorable. Now, this is where temperature is going to have a factor. When we increase the temperature, we always increase the contribution by delta S. Okay? So, that means that increasing in temperature in this case is increasing an unfavorable component. And so what you would find is that it would be favorable at low temperatures and become unfavorable at high temperatures. So negative spontaneous at low temperatures, positive non-spontaneous at high temperatures. Now, the temperature at which it becomes spontaneous is right here. That T where delta G is zero. Sorry, my T's got shifted on this. T, I hope you realized, was the x-axis here. Okay? And the temperature at which it is spontaneous is the point at which delta G, the y-axis, becomes zero. Right? So let's take a look at that. Um, what that temperature is, we will calculate that temperature. And what that temperature is depends very much on uh, the delta H and delta S values for the particular reaction. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay, We have a positive, so that's unfavorable. And we have a positive for delta S is favorable. That means that an increase in temperature increases the contribution, always, of delta S, but in this case, it is increasing a favorable situation. And so now, if we did our line, it would be non-spontaneous at high and become spontaneous. Now, that temperature at which it became spontaneous depends on the reaction, and we're going to calculate it in just a minute. But in this situation, it is unfavorable at low temperatures and becomes favorable if we get it, sorry, if we get it high enough temperature. And high enough depends on the reaction. Now, just a term that is used here, this would be called enthalpy-driven because when it is favorable, it is driven, or when it is spontaneous, excuse me, it is driven by a favorable enthalpy. This one is called entropy-driven because when it is spontaneous, it is driven by a favorable. Sorry, can't talk and write at the same time on Sunday mornings, I guess. All right, it is driven by the favorable entropy. All right, so here's the summary of this. Um, mathematically, it's a mathematically derived function, Gibbs free energy is, helps us with the temperature dependence of spontaneity. It's the maximum amount of non-pressure volume work. In other words, we're not using this to study situations where we have um, compression and expansion of gases. Uh, it's a balance of favorability between our entropy and our enthalpy. When it's positive, it's non-spontaneous. When it's negative, it's spontaneous. Now, we're going to look at a delta G. Notice right here I don't have the not there. When delta G at non-standard situations becomes zero, that's equilibrium. Okay, I'll put little knots here that might clarify. Okay, um, when delta G naught's positive, it's non-spontaneous. When delta G naught is negative, it's spontaneous. And we're going to find that when we are under non-standard ambient temperature pressure conditions or non-one molar conditions. When delta G is zero, we're at equilibrium. So that's important. OK, so how do we perform this balancing act? The mathematics is pretty straightforward. All you have to do here is watch out for units. Because delta H and delta Gs are reported in kilojoules, delta S is in joules. So if we want to calculate delta G for this reaction, uh, we would get 119. 0.2 minus my temperature, OK, 
Okay, and we are going to assume a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius here. So that's 298 Kelvin. Now, you can either change delta H or delta S. They have to be consistent. I've set this up in kilojoules. So this one's kilojoules. This is 0.2548. Delta S is now kilojoules per Kelvin. This is Kelvin. So the two Kelvins cancel. And I'll equal, I'll get delta G in kilojoules this time. And I get plus 13.4 kilojoules. So in this case, this is not spontaneous. Now let's evaluate this quickly. This, my delta H, was unfavorable. My delta S is positive, so it's favorable. So if I want to increase my favorable con, um, part, portion of this component, I want to increase my temperature. So that means if I increase my temperature, it will become spontaneous. Now the next example shows us how we calculate that temperature at which it becomes spontaneous. In this case, I have a favorable delta H because it's negative. I have an unfavorable delta S. And we want to calculate the delta, the point at which it becomes spontaneous. Well, the point at which it becomes spontaneous is delta G naught equal to zero. So I'm going to set delta G naught equal to zero, and I'm going to put in my minus 548 minus, be careful, um, I'm after my temperature, that's my unknown. Why I was saying be careful is the joules and kilojoules don't mix. You have to convert one or the other. That's a negative there. Okay, so if I rearrange this, in this case, I'm going to have T is equal to minus 548 over a minus 0 0.038. Can't get a negative temperature in these situations anyway. And when you do that calculation, I get 1440 Kelvin. That's the point at which it becomes spontaneous. Now, since I have an unfavorable delta S and temperature increases, an increase in temperature would increase that unfavorable component, I don't want to do that. I want low temperatures. So if we could graph that, what we would see, that same graph, remember that was delta G on the Y and temperature on the x-axis, sorry I did not catch that, okay? That means at low temperature it will be spontaneous, it's going to cross over and hit 1440 Kelvin, and so this is delta G naught, this is temperature, this value here is 1440 Kelvin, it is spontaneous below that, so I want a low temperature situation it is not spontaneous about it. Okay, we're going to delve into more mathematics. Till the next video, this is signing off.